powered by Sports Interaction, Canada's Sportsbook. Want to bet? Then get in on the action at Sports Interaction. The boys of summer are back on the diamond, and March Madness is on deck. Bet pregame, live in play, or on one of our many prop bets. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. Or in Ontario, download the app now using the QR code in the bottom of the screen. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Yo, the rapper Big Sean once said, Last night took an L, but tonight I bounced back. It wasn't last night, but, you know, let's just say it. And boy, howdy, they did. Well, we won't talk about the other three goals. Things kind of happened in the third period, but we're here and we won, so it's all good. Welcome to Game Over Toronto, everyone. My name is Fuad Suleiman, and I am here with the one and only Lauren Williamson. Lauren, how are you today? I'm fantastic for a Tuesday after a long weekend. And what better way to cop off an awful Tuesday after a long weekend than with a Leafs big win over the Buffalo Sabres, six to three in regulation, bit of a nail biter in the last 20 minutes or so, but at least come out on top. I I, come out on top where it matters. I I like to think it just, you know, I I like to think I just took a nap after the second period. And then it was, it was, it was done. It was finished five, nothing or six, nothing, six, nothing because Ryan O'Reilly got a hat trick. We'll talk about that too. It would but, be better uh, to sleep through the third period than the first, right? Imagine waking up after the first period and it's for nothing, and you're like, "What's happening right now?" Yeah, we're 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 gonna get to all of that. Uh, we have a very special guest on today that I'm gonna introduce right now. He is the host of the Cool Button Podcast on Sirius XM. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody, give it up for Steve Coolius. Steve Coolius. Good night, Lauren. Thanks for having me. It's uh, great to join you. I've made many a trip to Buffalo over the years, which has been the house of horrors for the Leafs. 52 <laughs> years of Sabres hockey. You want to talk about Le- the Leafs have a winning percentage of what, 22% in Buffalo? Is that that right? felt like a home game when the hats rained onto the ice. Just... And I believe the Sabre fans were so angry. That's why there was a bit of a comeback. But that's a story we'll get to in just a moment. Oh, I, I was going to ask. Like, I, I, So you've been to that barn where it's like basically like all the most rowdy Leaf fans take over that house. Like it's Project X, a really old <laughs> party movie. It, it, it's just, I could not believe. Like I, I've seen, we always see it's like half and half. It's sometimes 60, 40. That was like 95 to five. I saw like four sad Sabres fans in the front, but. Woo, that was, uh, they started the wave. That's what Lauren said kicked off the comeback, and I'm inclined to believe it. It it, it got them angry. Now, I, A, I've called one Sabre game, uh, filling in for Rick Jenneret in my career. Ooh. I've been to the old barn, the orange seats at the odd back in the day, and when the Sabres entered the NHL, they did so with the Leafs' blessing and had tremendous success off the get-go. French Connection, all of that stuff, and it's great for hockey. I don't understand how Sabre fans give up their season tickets in the lower bowl so the Leafs fans come in and dominate them. You would think that would lead to more success. It's the Sabre fans' fault who give up their season tickets so yeah. the Leafs fans can... There's people in Nashville that think the Leafs played at home tonight. <laughs> they do. They think the Leafs played... They're going to say, no, no, it was Buffalo at Toronto. No, it wasn't. The Sabres have had a great year, and they still might make the playoffs. But tonight was a pimple on the cheek for Sabres hockey because it was a kicking until, well, the Sabres come back in the third, guys. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I I heard that. Like, I was reading that. I'm like, why would they give him up? And then I realized profit because I'm pretty sure the secondary market tickets probably were, like, three times the regular going rate for a Sabres game. So, uh, but yeah, they, they, they make up their season ticket package price by selling one or two Leaf games a year to Leaf fans. That's their fault, but that did not have any effect on the Ryan O'Reilly, the Riley factor. Dun, dun, oh, dun, I, it was a factor tonight, Lauren. The Riley factor. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, after the first couple of games where they did, to Keith's point, they did look really good. And they just weren't, they weren't really in the right position, but they were getting there. And by the end of the game on the other night, it looked like they were only going to get better. And tonight, wouldn't you know it, 
Ryan O'Reilly gets his first two in that barn in his career, having even been a Buffalo Sabre for him to come in and to connect with Mitch Marner on those passes, which, you know, magic Mitch, you can just tell already that they're getting great chemistry and you know, the last couple of days, any kind of social media has just been rife with people knowing better and saying, oh, no, he's got to be on the third line. Like, we're wasting his talent. If they play like that, like that, that sort of game is the sort of game that we've been waiting for the Leafs to play against Buffalo for the last couple of seasons. Right. Like they they dominated from the start, right from the get go, like more than once it panned to a couple of the Sabres players who are looking up at the clock in the first period going, I can't believe I have to sit through another 45 45- minutes of this crap and we go home yet (laughs) yeah like oh my gosh i I don't want to be here and now to their credit they do come back in the third period and the leafs hold them off but that's the kind of game where we've been like okay see this is the part of the gaslighting where everything is going great and i know that you can play like this so when games like this are played it is a breath of fresh air but then it's almost equally frustrating because steve you've been a leafs fan your whole life right you grew up in toronto you were born here you went to ryerson university and maybe you're not a Leafs fan, but you know what? The last couple of seasons, when they play like that, when they play a game like this, do you find it to be redeeming or do you find it to be disturbing <laughs> that they can still do it? Well, tonight was too easy. It was right. too easy. And when Ryan O'Reilly came, I just assumed he would be the third line center. Yeah. When he lined up with Tavares and Marner, I thought, is this a Tampa message? for later in the spring and then is there another addition that's coming but the addition supposed to be on the blue line I was confused and clearly there were some moments I thought John wasn't used to being a left winger again the last time John Tavares was left winger was at the World Cup in Toronto with Team Canada and I saw him play left wing and he was great made a great move on Ryan McDonough and just ate him inside out blah 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 we all know what ended up happening That's the last time he played left wing. And remember, since he arrived here, he's never had a circle on the power play. It's either been Marner, Nylander, or Matthews, which means his power play numbers are actually down because in the bumper in front of the net, you don't score as much. Tavares lived in the his uh, Kucherov circle with the Islanders. That's why he got all those points. So here he said, I'll play a secondary role. It's okay. I'll play secondary. You want me to move to the wing? I'll play it. And if that's what's best for the team, I'm the best idea guy wins. Doesn't matter about belief, what, whatever's best for the team. And if it's best for the team for Tavares to be the left winger, he'll be the left winger. If it's best to move a Ryan O'Reilly down, if it's a matchup against Tampa, remember, they've got too many centers too. Stamkos, Sorelli, Hall, Point. They've got four. Yeah. Toronto's got four. I don't know how this is going to play out, but the Leafs are way better today way better today than they were on Friday night at 12:18 before who broke the trade Twitter I'm not sure but when I saw that I went the Riley factor they're better they still need a defenseman it's only Buffalo whether they make her the playoffs or not but when you can move yarn croak down her foot down they're better and if it affects the power play what happened against Boston three or four years ago Hyman loses the draw to Bergeron. It goes to Pasternak. It goes to 63 back of the net. That's what O'Reilly and Ochari are supposed to do. Guys, help the PK as well. Yeah, and you know, I, 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 I was shocked too. Like I saw, like there was a tweet about, you know, they're gonna it, the Tavares on the left wing was not just a, a fun little experiment. It was a, a long term plan. And I thought I was like, oh, that's kind of strange. Maybe that's gonna be a little weird. You no, know, maybe he's not used to playing left wing, but. That was that like that line kind of made me eat my words in that first period. They looked like the Harlem Globetrotters against the Washington Generals <laughs> just in the first period. And this the third period is a different story. But with I, I think people get a little hung up on lines and like line definitions that it's just another good player you're adding in there. Like you if Ryan O'Reilly gets moved to the third line, it's not like we're wasting his talent or anything like that. It's just you just now have three lines centered by three elite level centers, and that's good that's not a bad problem to have that's a very good problem to have so i would say like more depth is better than less depth i guess that's the obvious answer (laughs) so i I, i'm with you on that it doesn't you need 22 minutes 20 minutes eight so when you kill penalties and in this case o'reilly on power play too 
You're going to be involved in all those types of situations. Right now, this might be a glory. The only matchup in the first round we know is Toronto and Tampa. All we don't know is the dates. Who's home ice? Like uh, somebody said to me, it's a 93% actuary number that th they're playing each other. So that's the only first round matchup you know. So this is a game of what are you doing? What am I doing? So O'Reilly, second line center, winger, whatever it is, that stuff doesn't matter. The Leafs are better because they were short on top nine depth anyway until they made the move. And how they sort themselves out, uh, they will figure it out. It's not a hat trick every night. It's not four and five points every night. To me, it's more interesting this. Going in the playoffs, is Nylander with Matthews and is Marner with Tavares or whoever? That might be a switch that could come up at any moment. It's like a magician. You don't show your hand. That's what I find this Lawrence so intriguing about Toronto's new top nine mix. I think so too. And you may, you, you know, make a great point in that you need all of that when it comes to the playoffs. And maybe it's good that they're starting off this way because, you know, we know that Keith is, has basically, without saying it, said that he's going to try the other option too, but that he needs to see this and give us some runway because, you know, maybe when you, depending on who, what happens, right? Because maybe in some cataclysmic universe, Buffalo makes it past the first round, right? And then you're playing Buffalo in the in the second round, okay? In that case, you're going to have to play differently than you might play Tampa. And wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have some variations and not be predictable every night and not make it so that they have all this footage of what you're going to do because you can stay your lines. You can you can change the way you've been playing. And Achari coming in has been the best thing for the fourth line. Oh. This whole season, he has turned Zach Aston Reese into a bulldozer. Zach Aston Reese is just mowing people over today. Did you see that, Steve? He was hitting people left, right, and center, <laughs> and and maybe bringing that sort of energy to the bottom six and showing the other guys, hey, this is how you can play smart and still be responsible defensively without giving up what we need the bottom six to do, right? And I think that. Both of those guys coming in and playing the way that they have, if they keep playing like that, it's going to be great. And maybe we do need some some shoring up when it comes to defense, but boy, the, that whole first period, if they can play even 95% of that every every game of the playoffs, we have a really good shot about getting out of the first round for the first time in what feels like 100 years. Yeah, since some people's kids uh, were babies. So I, I think that, that, you know, this they're 0 for 6 under this regime. Yeah. This has been seven straight outstanding regular seasons. Outstanding. Yeah, the best, the best the I've ever season. seen. Outstanding. Fouette, outstanding. Since the yeah. year they, they, with all the rookies, they yeah. lost to the Capitals. But that year was like, way to go, puppy. That's great. Yeah. And the rest that was of magic was beans. Frustrating. <laughs> but what, what has been missing? Killing penalties against elite teams. Like, what was the difference of last year's Tampa Toronto series? The five on three Kucherov goal in game six. Yeah. That was the moment. That was the moment. And maybe the, you know, Eric Furlight call on Justin Hall. We can argue about that later. Anyway, but not oh, killing uh, penalties against Boston was huge. Was it huge? Oh, and yeah. Team toughness. And guess yeah. what? They don't have fighters. Wendell Clark hasn't been added, but Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari give the Leafs this dimension. And if Zach Aston Reese is brought into the fight, that's something they've been missing since Corson, Tucker, Green, and Roberts for those Let's older go. fans. Off that, that's the. I mean, that's the last time they made the second round when I was ten years old. There are kids getting drafted into the NHL that have never seen the Leafs in the second round. Fraser Minton, like, he's he was born after they 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 got kicked out of this. He was born in July of two thousand four. Yeah, I should, sorry yeah. everybody, I I don't want to hurt it, but it's a good game. It's a good game. They won the game. Let's not hurt everybody's feelings. But to your point about Achari, uh, I, for a bottom sixer, like, like the way I kind of like like to judge them is how much did I notice you doing things? Like, it doesn't matter if you score goals, but he was absolutely everywhere in this game and the previous games too. And I keep thinking 52. I'm like, when did Martin Marincin get so good? And I'm like, no, I, wait, Noel Achari. I forgot about that. But yeah, I mean, he was such a really sneaky little ad in that deal. I, I think he's going to pay dividends in the playoffs. I mean, he, he was on the 2019 Bruins that tortured the Leafs and the 2018 Bruins. So maybe we can channel some Bruins magic in our team. Yeah. I think Achari and Corrali were killers. The wraparound yeah. goal on Freddie, not a good goal. Not, no. not, 
not a good resume moment. And the real no. truth is, the only way you slay the dragon is by putting the sword through his heart. Game of Thrones. Excuses forever. We all know the next real game that matters is game 83. So yep. are they going to talk the talk, Lauren? And Fuad and walk the walk? They still need something else to help on the blue line. But at least, who won game seven? Nick Paul. Mississauga yep. kid, great goals. So at least there's some type of answer for what Tampa's been able to do. And they saw their devil in 2019 with Columbus. So <laughs> are the Leafs going to win? We don't know. Are they better today than they were on Friday night at 12-17? Yes, yeah. they are. Well, and and to your point, Steve, you know, they they get they get Nick Tampa gets Nick Paul last year and he becomes like a game changer. And we have been terrible against Buffalo for the last three seasons. We get Ryan O'Reilly and all of a sudden beating Buffalo. We got Nola Chari. Maybe we beat Boston. Maybe what we need is Ryan McDonough from National Predators. National Predators. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just kidding. That's, that's, no, but that's maybe we chess. need maybe we need an old Tampa player to play defense on the Leafs. That's 4D tonight. chess right there. That is that it worked is tonight. That's that just is magic beans. Real thinking I did. That is that is what we call 4D chess. <laughs> That's what the notebook is for, man. Absolutely. That's what the notebook is for. This is what she does. This is what you do all day at work. You just you're not do you just you just maybe if we acquire this person, we just put them in there. You have you have like a whole board. Yeah. Show, like show that us scene from Ali Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Show right. you show us your board. <laughs> your your bulletin board. But uh yeah, Steve, what do you, you think the answer is on defense? Yeah, I was actually going to ask. Do you have any ideas? Right out of my mouth. <laughs> I like Scott Mayfield. Okay. I don't, I I think Matias Ekholm's too expensive and too long and will get too old. Um, it looks like Gavrikov might go to Boston. Uh, Eric Carlson's a pipe dream. That's not happening. Uh, Jacob Chikrin's not happening. No. Uh, yeah. I'm a Ben Sherratt guy, but I don't think that's happening either. Um, Let's give up a first for him. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, Scott Mayfield is affordable, realistic if the Islanders fall out. And with the injury right. to Barzell, but then they come back because Bo Horvat has a two-point. Like, this is crazy. Look at the standings. We didn't have this last year. Last year at this time, eight in, eight out. Now eight is not enough, Nicholas. All these teams are right there, and it's very tight. So it's almost as if who's going to fall out that opens up an opportunity and, and becomes a seller. I mean – I I like Mayfield for a lot of reasons, and I wonder what it does to the Leafs' right side and where Justin Hall may or may not fit in and Connor Timmons moving forward. I don't – see, to me, the Leafs are – they're going they're, they're going on a date. They got the limo. They got the tux. They got – They got the boutonniere beautiful... and the corsage. They're ready to go. But they're wearing flip-flops. So the Italian <laughs> shoes oh. – <laughs> the Italian shoes is the defenseman. Whom right. will that be? And I don't have the answer. I just have my own list like you do. I didn't think of Ryan McDonough. Ekholm's got too much term. There's no way they make the Ryan O'Reilly and Noah Chari move without knowing that they've got someone, guys, on the back end in the plans. That's just me. Yeah. Just to remind everybody, make sure you smash that like. Make, make like button. Woo. Amazing for me to say. Make sure you smash that like button. Share it. Tell all your friends. My name is Fuad Suleiman. Lord Williamson is to either my left or my right. I can never tell. It depends on what the thing. And we have Steve Coolius here, here on Game Over Toronto. Uh, yeah, I think the defense thing that one more, one more defenseman would be great. I like Justin Hall. He has like he's like he's that famous Leafs defenseman whipping boy. We all have him. Every generation of Leafs teams has that defenseman that we all just blame like indiscriminately, but. He he has his he has his good moments and he's good in the PK. He's good sometimes defensively, but when he has the puck on his stick, especially in a high leverage situation, I in the playoffs just for plays go to die. I do not want to see that. Like in a playoff game, in a game seven, I do not want him to have the puck on his stick because something calamitous is gonna happen with that. So I I like him as a depth option, but I, I to your point, I think the Leafs definitely do need just one more. Just one more solid back end upgrade. And we've talked about physicality from the back end. They've got puck movers. Wasn't crazy again about Morgan Riley defending outside the dots, which reminds me of Morgan against Eichel as a saber. 
Morgan against O'Reilly as a blue. There's there's times, there's moments that I uh, I'm confused. So when when I, I the Leafs need Sylvain Lafave, the Leafs need Bob Rouse, the Leafs need someone who can stay home in the top four and be safe. That's what they're missing. They're they don't need John Klingberg. They're not getting Eric Carlson. They they need reliability. They need Jamie McCowan. Who in this group it is, I'm not sure. But if they don't add one more reliable body in that mix, that might be a problem, whether it's in round one, two, or how far they think they're going to go, in my opinion. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I believe they need, in a perfect world, this team needs two players, Sylvain Lefebvre and Wendell Clark, and they're not coming back as 53-year-olds. That's not <laughs> happening. I would, now, I would pay to see it. Now, Steve, I do have a question because this is something that I've brought up in previous shows. Um, I want to get your opinion. Do you think that the, do you think, do you find the Leafs lack of defensive scoring to be all any, in any way concerning going into the playoffs or anything? Because they don't really score generally from the blue line. It doesn't bother me. It bothers some of my colleagues. But they're so stacked. They're one of three teams that have four 50-point guys on the club. Right. They've just added a guy who's underachieving or was in St. Louis this year. There's a lot to like about their offense. They're they're actually a better offensive team than the, statistically they've shown me. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a difference maker? I think it's about defending and killing penalties. I'm more of a guy that says, kill the penalty you take against Boston or Tampa as opposed to more offense on the back end. I I believe that the Leafs are going to win by playing, but what have they done this year as their MO has not been under the Babcock, even early Keith administration? They're one of the best defensive teams in the league, and they got two resurrected goalies that were there at the Last Supper with Judas and Jesus, and they're still – and look where the, look what they've done. Like, this they're is – like, they got they got Ilya Samsonov, who was a first-round pick, and, but – they 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 don't need great goal today. They only need above average. They yeah. they need to me. They need the fourth defenseman that could make people go. Am I taking that to the net or am I going to go wide? Because they're <laughs> they're not going to take it wide on on Riley or or Timothy Lilgren or Rasmus uh, Sandin, but they take it wide on Scott Mayfield or. I'm a Sherrod guy because look what he did to the Leafs when he was in Montreal as an example. Yeah. A lot I of people in the chat. Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm i more of – I want this. The Leafs don't need offense. They can score. I want – you want to come to the net with your shoulder down? A knuckle That's, sandwich. That's what they need. Yes. Uh, no, yes. I, a lot of people are saying – talking about a former fifth overall pick once named the human eraser, one Luke Shen. He would improve say, the team. He, yeah. he would improve in a lower role, in yeah. a lower role. So if that's the best they can do, I would make that trade. I would make that trade. Yeah, he, I mean, he's he's been pulled for trade-related reasons. Like half the league is apparently now. Like Jacob Chikrin, not to go off topic, has been on trade-related reasons for like three weeks. If they don't trade him, it's going to be extremely awkward going back to work. That it's like, I'm back. And they're just like, you're back. I thought you were traded. <laughs> They're resting him for the playoffs. I'm not, yeah. I'm yeah. not happy about that, guys, about what's going on with Gavrikov and, and Chikrin. I never not professional. That. It's not it's not cool. It's not dirty pool. It's gone on too long. Like yeah. where does it stop? March I think second? I <laughs> I, I tend to agree with you, actually, Steve. I don't I think if you're a GM and you know that your guy, you can't announce the trade till Thursday for for cap reasons, whatever. Pulling them for one game is one thing. Yeah. Pulling them for multiple games is like, okay, you're just insulating your product because someone's gonna buy it, but you don't have a person to buy it. Right? There should I think there should be like a penalty for holding out players are before the trade deadline intentionally for that reason. Like there should be there should have to be like a justifiable reason. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's you strange. Know the PA and the agents are discussing of what's like what's right, what's cool, how how far this has gone. And I'm paying full price in Arizona. Am I getting a discount? I'm not seeing your best product. At one point, when is it too much? 
And it's not the biggest issue in the NHL. It's not offside challenge or goalie interference or fixing all-star moments and the tender tandem that I had to call, which was an unmitigated disaster. We're not doing that again. We might mm -hmm. curl in Toronto next year or do something on Lake Ontario ice fishing. It's not that serious. But if you're Jacob Chicker and you're like, come on, this has gone on for 18 months. So I'm with you guys. But your original question was Luke Shen. He is also, Lauren, on my list. There you go. Who else there is on you your go. list, Steve? I need to see this list. Do you have it written down like I do? Because I have got a, a list. short memory. I got a list. I told you Scott Mayfield's probably the highest on the list of realistic, realistic, realistic. Uh, right-handed defensemen with grit that would help and would scare teams from taking the puck to the net with their shoulder down. Yeah. Tampa looks up and sees Scott Mayfield or Boston or the team they have right now. Is Mayfield noticeable? Ask, ask 86 in Tampa if he's seen Scott Mayfield before. Yeah, I mean, I, and Scott Mayfield comes from those, like, winning programs in New York, from the New York Islanders where – they didn't make the conference finals because they had world-beating superstar offensive talent. They made it by grinding down the competition into a fine powder until they were just no more. I mean, they lost to Tampa twice, but still, I mean, they, they made two straight conference finals with less than a sum of their parts, basically, as a, or more than the sum of their parts, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they were they're like a spokes in a, that Barry Trot, those Barry Trotts teams. I mean, you... You applauded them when it was over. And, and you know, I've always oh, yeah. felt the Islanders were good enough to, to go a couple of rounds, but not talented enough to win. Yeah. And just for the Islander fans missing or listening out there, uh, we don't need you. No, they they, they do need 91. And <laughs> yeah, they do. We, they do. Whatever ends up happening, they've never replaced 91. And the best deal for Barzell was second line center behind 91 just as an fyi sorry yeah no i tend I've... to agree <laughs> so how they do you feel do. they clearly do need him so how are you feeling about the goaltending i mean Ilya samsonov has played like what i read was like this is the 11th of 11th game in 14 possible games I, I butchered that his 11th yeah 11th start in 14 games i said that again okay <laughs> so he's been really good you know a lot better than he was expected to be um with some kind of sometimes a little bit of, a little bit of variance uh the last game we found out that versus chicago that he quote had a tough time on the shitter but uh looked like it was a little bit better than it was last night but still he let in a couple of weird goals uh the five three goal namely was kind of rough but how do you feel about the goaltending situation obviously matt murray is not very durable so Samsonov is probably the guy. How, how would you feel? I mean, you said, oh, well, all we need is average goaltending, but do you, do you think this is enough? The goaltending is enough. A little, a little above average. A little, above, a little average. above average. So what did Colorado get last year? Got what it. did Corey Crawford deliver for Chicago? Before that, yeah. Andy Niemi was the goalie of record against Scott Late in 2010. Oh, yeah. uh, Matt Murray's won two cups, right? Did yeah. he win the Conn Smythe trophies those years? Uh, no. So. no. so sometimes there's, um, uh, the Penguins won a cup without Chris Letang on the back end. So it's yeah. about team defense, which includes the goaltending, right? Darcy Kemper, we talk about him. Braden Hope, he's not even in the league anymore. These are all goalies, and many of them are Canadian, yeah. by the way, um, who have won without being Patrick Waugh, Martin Brodeur, or even Carey Price, as an example. I think that this club is a team that's built on just needing above average goaltending. If a series is going to come down to who makes 50 saves, Vasilevsky or Samsonov, that's not good for Toronto. That's no, not good not. for Toronto. <laughs> Although if it's a second round series and it's Allmark against whoever, I'm, I need to see it from Linus Allmark myself. Okay. Linus, Snoopy, whatever, Charlie Brown. I'll need to see that myself. If he's going to win 16 games, <laughs> Vasilevsky, another story. Another story. Uh, Freddie, Vitek Vanacek, we know who the goalies are in the East. To me, just be above average. Yeah. Don't give up a goal like Vesa Toskala. Don't mm. give up a goal in a wrap round by Sean Corrali. And see what you... Didn't Cam Atkinson score from outside the dots on Jack Campbell? 
Was that a good goal against Columbus? No, it wasn't a good goal. Nothing about that series is, is good. <laughs> don't be on the shitter when you're giving up bad goals in games five, six, or seven. How about that? Wise words to live by, everybody. Yeah, don't look, live on the shitter. Loki, Ilya Samsonov is one of the best quotes the Leafs have gotten in years. I, I absolutely, anytime he comes to the microphone, I lo- love it. He has so much confidence in it. For someone who was with English as a second language, he has so much confidence and just just says what's on his mind, and I, I love it. It's 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 refreshing, and, you know, especially when he makes just just tells tells TMI tells it like it is. We love it. So he's a character. Yeah, well, and you so, could you could tell the difference tonight between Samsonov playing tonight and Samsonov the other night, right? Like the other night, there was a couple of goals that went in that just Samsonov when he's healthy doesn't play that slow. Like there was just a couple where he was just. A quarter, uh, you know, a hundredth of a second too late to move away from his post. And tonight, way more solid. Like the first 40 minutes, just a solid wall. He yeah. made a couple of really good saves. He saves one right at the end of the second to keep it 5-0. And then, you know, in the third, it opens up a little bit. But that's, again, like you said, Steve, to your point, it's about the defense just falling through. In the first period, they only allowed the Sabres to take three shots. In the second, the Sabres got up to 18 shots and the Leafs had four like oh they, when you, they lapped them the last two periods yeah they lapped like, them with, with shots the same like the Leafs got lucky in the first period and they won the first period handily handily yeah. and then the second period they do get a goal but Boston not Boston Buffalo is evens it up in the shot category in the effort category in the hits category in the care category and you started to see a little bit of the the Leafs letting their foot off the pedal and in the third even more so you know they allow a couple of really bad goals and then the wave starts going and then they score another goal and it's just like oh my gosh guys please it's not even our own barn please stop doing the wave when we're winning this much because no lead is safe right and I'm glad that they they I'm glad they closed it out. And I'm glad O'Reilly got the hat trick. Like what a what an awesome moment for him. And uh you know, third game as a leaf, getting his third goal of the night. I, I hope he enjoys his 18 minute flight back to Toronto. Yeah, uh, they're they're not taking the bus, right? Uh and coming down the QEW. I, I think when people look at the club, it's about game 83. But you need to enjoy the first 82 and then learn about your club. To either yeah. add, subtract, trade, and everything else. And of all these games that we've talked about, from the Washington series that the Leafs led two games to one, by the way, oh, and yeah. the Capitals out muscled, out skilled, and out experienced the Leafs. And the mm-hmm. handshake line was, "Your time will come." Losing in eighteen and nineteen, losing in twenty. The, the Montreal loss might have been the hardest because of who it was and it was... how they blew it, and it was a choke. Oh, we're gonna know soon yeah. and the Tavares group, injury too like ugh. right if they've learned from it at all but Travis German is gone some of the other stuff they've done what they can to improve this club but to me the Italian shoes is another man on defense and if that doesn't happen that's not my fault there's enough quality and quantity out there Kyle Dubas you've got a week and three days you're on the clock. You hear that, Kyle? You're on the clock. No, but did you find anything? Uh, not, I mean, not the poo-poo, the parade. I mean, it was a great night. Mitch Marner, actually, I saw a stat. I, I don't want to forget this. Had Was the first Leaf to have five assists in a game since Doug Gilmore did it in, like, 93 or 94. So, like, that's that's something. Five assists in a game, that's, that is more than something. Mitch Marner has been the best Leaf all season. Uh, but do you find anything concerning about, you know, I, I guess every team is going to kind of rest in their laurels just by human nature when they're up 5 nothing. It's the score effects. But, you know, letting it get to 5-3, is there some kind of concern? I, I, a little concern came to my mind. I'm like, does this team, because I had a theory, like, the reason why they lost to Chicago and they were up in all those series that you mentioned. Every single series they had a lead, except for Columbus. We won't talk about that one. But does this team have a have trouble when they're up and when they have the advantage, like when it's time to take it over the goal line, do they have a mental block? Do you think? I know it's a mental block, but uh, the Gilmore six, one five assist night was against Minnesota in February of 93. The next night, the Leafs were down five, two to Minnesota and scored four in the third. Zezel Osborne and Bill Berg, huge in the win. And Ozzy's a buddy of mine. 
that win against Minnesota was a, a major Andrew Chuck Gilmore bonding moment in what eventually would have been what was almost an unbelievable run. That shouldn't be forgotten because some of the best leaf moments in history are in February whether it's Sittler's 10-point night, Turnbull's five goals, oh, the bad. Marner night, for whatever reason, magic happens in February. As it, you know what else happens? Block, as it relates to mental blocks, Ryan O'Reilly, it's Ryan O'Reilly, Morgan Riley's moment, that's a troublesome moment outside the dots. Like that, if that's not corrected now, that's not getting corrected. In a game that's five nothing, then five, what do you, the least puck management, if they're up two nothing late in the second, you don't bring a puck back in your zone on a regroup and put trouble back in your zone. The Leafs are a possession team, but that's a dump and change moment. Sometimes they get too cute. They think they're the Tom Cruise at the bar and they want to get Coyote Ugly. Coyote Ugly is dropping the moment and bringing the puck back in your own zone. So the, the possession game the Leafs play gets them in trouble when they don't manage time and score. And 5-0, five 5-1, five 5-2, five Connor Timmons and Morgan Riley made big mistakes. Are they learnable moments? I would hope so. That's why I think they need more uh, an addition on the blue line. And sometimes you wonder, honestly, why in a moment when you have a comfortable lead, are you playing with fire? I saw that in the third period. Yeah. I to- I, mean- I totally agree. And if you if you think about it, when a forward makes a mistake, you know, there's other people there to sort of help clean up the mess. When you're the last man back and you make a mistake, it's on you because you were it. You were the last person back and cheating in situations where you shouldn't be, like you said, all it does is create havoc and chaos and and gives the other team an opportunity to rewrite what you're doing. Like, I would rather you just skate in a big, huge loop in the other end a hundred times than decide to just come back over the blue line, make it nice and casual, like stop it. And I find that they do the same thing on the power play where, They'll be, they'll have possession and it'll just come out. And instead of trying to get it back in the neutral zone and then back into the O zone, they're like, let's bring it all the way back behind the net. Let's get both of our forwards back to the double drop back pass, bring restart the whole thing, extra 20 seconds. And in the playoffs, 20 seconds on a power play is like a hundred years. And <laughs> to waste time like that, just to get the right setup, you're going to waste opportunities that the other teams would rather take advantage of you in transition and just run your show and not let you get set up because the more you get set up, the more they get set up to get set up for your setup. Like, <laughs> yeah, And Lauren, it, and what you said matters more. If the game that you're talking about, those 20 seconds are in a game that you're losing or tied. If yeah. you're up by two and you want to waste your two minutes because there's 5.33 to go and the next uh, commercial break is coming up at the next whistle after the power play and you want to kill that time and we're up to nothing, that's one thing. But in that sense of urgency, sometimes on the power play, they move it around and are doing things where you want to create analytically more chances and more opportunities to play it for one chance as opposed to being able to get multiple chances on goal. Now, I know we're nitpicking a little bit, but we both see the same things, but it is something to watch moving forward. It's not my A level of concern. Uh, The bigger concern is the PK. And as you know, because I've been barking about it all night, a fourth defenseman. Yeah, I didn't think you mentioned it. No, 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 no. Well, everybody, you're listening to you're listening to Game Over Toronto. My name is Fuad Saloon. Once again, for those who are just joining us, Lauren Williamson is with us, and so is Steve Coolius. Uh, Steve, you mentioned the best moments in Leafs history happened in February. Uh, you know what happened in February? Actually, February twenty second, twenty twenty, was the David Ayers game. So sometimes, you know, giveth. Sometimes February giveth. February <laughs> taketh away. Taketh away. Funny, funny enough, that was my 26th birthday, and it was, it was, uh, I didn't see the game, and then I saw it on my phone. I was like, "What the hell just occurred?" But yeah, let's uh, let's not rehash those old wounds. <laughs> but, okay, cool. Well, and and it's oh, February nothing. is important. <laughs> February is important, but May is more important. And May. if we can close out May, sliding into June, as a Leafs fan and still actively cheering. That would be great. That would be fantastic. Before wouldn't it? Th- oh. <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't See, it before be? We, before we go, I do have a question because you've done a few play-by-play jobs in your past career, and you've had a long, illustrious career in broadcasting and hockey. What are your top 
plays that you have called, if you have any? Because I know you've done like some local teams, some little minor league teams. You've done an NHL game or two. And I I bet there are some plays that just stick out in your mind for one reason or another. Can you just can you just tell us a couple? Because I'm curious. Well, um, the Sabres-Devils game is number one that uh, Jason Palmerville scored in a shootout. So that was a great moment, filling in for Rick Jenneret for sure. Uh, the Spangler Cup, the three... The three gold medals for Canada uh, in Davos was something special. Uh, great action. When I did say Elvis, which was Merle's, Merzlikens, which was Merzlikens then, but when I yelled, Elvis has left the crease, apparently uh, Twitter loved that kind of lie. Elvis has left the crease Ooh. was a moment. Uh, they didn't score, but Canada still went on to win the game, which is great. And so those are two big moments, but I was lucky enough to call both of my daughter's games when they played midget and junior hockey and to be able to call when your kid has a great moment. So even though it's NHL Spangler cup, still calling your kids games. And I hope to still be able to call a Jessica Guelph Griffin's game sometime in the future. Uh, and hopefully they go on a long playoff run here that starts tomorrow. So as a hockey dad, whether you're Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, Walter, we miss you. We miss you. Um, it's always about watching it from the past, present, and of course, into the future. Let's go, Griffins. Let's do it. Let's go, Griffins. Let's go, Guelph Griffins. Let's We're go, all Guelph Griffins, Griffins fans tonight. We're all. Griffins I went to fans Guelph tonight. Humber. Guelph Humber. Not really Guelph, but Guelph at Humber College. It was basically a high school attached to it. But yes, go, Griffins. Anyway, everybody, this has been swell. Great game. Five points. Great from guest. Warner. Great guest, Patrick. On, great show, Ryan O'Reilly. Great everything. Great. Absolutely. Tom tomorrow's my birthday, so extra great. I'm getting old. 29. Well, happy birthday in 45 minutes, there, Fuad. And oh. if if you're listening to this tomorrow morning on your commute, then happy birthday to Fuad. Make sure you shout him out on Twitter and fill up his phone feed because that would be hysterical. Um, like yes, we said, 200 of you. More than I had when I started out, my friend. For Game Over Toronto, you can find me on Twitter at Lauren in the Six. My name is Lauren Williamson. I'm Fuad Suleiman. You catch me at Fuad underscore sports. And of course, Steve Coolius. Tell us where we can find you. Plug what you got to plug. What do you Give got coming us. up, man? We got coming up anything exciting on the on the horizon? I have Dylan Larkin on Sirius XM, the power play uh, this okay. week. Uh, I will ask him how much money he wants, and then I'll call Steve. Uh, to get him a contract. So uh, even though he's a Detroit Red Wing and he's on the other side, he's a great guy. Scarborough dad, Scarborough grandmother, North Bay girlfriend. I just said, you might as well just switch passports. Anyway, great guest coming up on the power play. Craig and I are back on the podcast on Thursday and we're all over trade deadline day. Something that we really started at the score in 98, but TSN's taken too much credit. So Dudley... Don't forget, it was us at the score in 98, but we started something and you guys have done a great job since. So have a shots that. fired. All right, everybody. <laughs> thanks again. Have a good night. Take have care. Have a great night, everybody. Game over. Powered by Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook.